he's mad! What sort of person boots this stuff up? Alright, time for the first task where we get to fly on a broom. Every single time I've tried flying on a broom in the Sorcerer's Stone and the Chamber of Secrets, I was complaining about various things. And the fact that the Goblet of Fire game has already messed up so many things doesn't give me much confidence in this upcoming experience. And yet I can't help but feel like I'm looking forward to at least trying this out. See how well this works. Hey, look at that! The in game camera is following me! I love this already. Uh, but once again, I don't know which button on the keyboard corresponds to the buttons I'm using on the controller. I think it might be the A button on my Xbox 360 controller, which I have mapped to do jinx attacks, but I'm really not sure. Occasionally, I think that button might help slightly, but if I'm being honest here, I don't think any of the four primary buttons, which all do Jinx's Accio, Magicus Extremos, and the other button that does various spells, seem to have any effect whatsoever on speeding me up, so really all I'm doing is using my left analog stick, and use the boost rings to increase your speed? I've been doing that several times already, why tell me this now? And what's- oh, oh, okay, what's the point of needing a button to speed up when I can just fly through some of these blue rings instead, anyways? And I said a minute ago how my guess was that the A button, or the Jinx button, might be what was supposed to speed me up, but I looked at the video game footage from Episode 1, and it says that the keyboard C button that you use for spells like Wingardium Leviosa, and that would be mapped to the X button on my controller instead. So I guess I fucked that up while playing. And I guess we've circled back around to Hogwarts, too, so you blew your chance of getting the egg so easily a minute ago, you practically had the dragon a mile away. It was even flying in front of you, you just had to turn around and go back, you knucklehead. And this vaguely reminds me of the avalanche race in Need for Speed the Run, where projectile explosives would hit the side of the mountains and you would have to drive your way through rock slides while dodging boulders. Yes, yes, very nice music and views and everything. God. Damn it, hit a wall. But maybe lead the dangerous beast away from your home and school? You know, this place you care about so much after living with the Dursleys for ten years or something? I do not have a broken shoulder yet, by the way. That kind of impact by hitting the wall like that has got to have more force in it than a hit from a bludger. Also, these rings of beans have rather large collision detection areas. There have been times where I could have sworn I missed a ring, but it made a sound effect as if it counted anyways, so that's nice. Is this part of the lake, by the way, that we're flying by right now? I mean, I don't know what other body of water would be near Hogwarts, but this seems more like a wide river than a standing body of water. I guess it does make for more interesting scenery as you fly past, though. I mean, that dragon is shooting, like, a fireball a second. I mean, this is insane. It's like, pachoo, pachoo, pachoo. Rapid fire spitting into the... I don't know. Oh, and I get a silver. That's a shame. Oh, I unlocked the prefix bathroom, too. So really, that whole part of the game was over in less than three minutes? Well shit, that might be alright for playing the game, but it's difficult to make a whole episode out of something that short. I might as well try it again, seeing as how I could have presumably gotten one more shield if I had flown the course a little faster and earned a gold medal instead. And the prefect's bathroom is locked until I get one more shield anyways. I 
And I tried to skip the cutscenes since there was no reason to watch them again, but I'm not sure there's any way to actually do that. You now I try any button on my controller and keyboard, it just doesn't do anything. And the fireballs is fast enough on its own. Why not have an actual functioning speed boost button and just forget the blue acceleration rings? You know, give the player a little more direct control regarding when and where they speed up and slow down. And you could have had a button for braking too, and so on and so forth. Well, here we go again. You know what I did though? Later on I went back and played this challenge again for a third time, this time being sure to hit the X button on my controller which corresponded to the C button it wants me to press to speed up, and sure enough, nothing happened. I mean, I tried it before the first time around, but I wasn't really trying to hold it down for extended periods of time or anything. So this was a proper test this time around. I even hit the C key on my keyboard just to be sure, and it still didn't do anything different. I just... I don't understand. And again, what's the point of that message if you have the blue speed rings anyways? I wonder if broomsticks like this have a bit of magic so that the wood isn't flammable. You know, for the amount of money the Firebolt or anything in the Nimbus series of brooms might cost, it had better be immune to fire. And this isn't really relevant to what I'm doing now, but just like the third game, but unlike the first and second game, Snape isn't anywhere to be seen. I guess I'm a little less disappointed that he's not here in this fourth game instead of the third game, because here we don't have free roaming. Although the lack of that feature is a significant disappointment in and of itself, but at least if you're not going to have the free roam, then I guess it doesn't matter if you're missing a few characters like that. For all I've heard about the Order of the Phoenix game and the ability to truly explore the Hogwarts castle and grounds, it'd best have Snape along with a ton of other secondary and minor characters throughout. Even Peeves could make a comeback, I'd like to see him take a shit on Umbridge or something. Who else could we see again, by the way? Professor Sprouts, the Weasley Twins, Ginny and Neville, although they're going to be part of Dumbledore's army anyway, so I would expect to see them. Dumbledore and Hagrid, although we've seen glimpses of them in cutscenes already in this game, but that hardly feels like it should count. And, let's see, Professor Flitwick, even though he was in the third game too, unlike some of the other teachers that just disappeared in the third game. So on and so forth. And I really do wish I could monetize this shit, though. I mean, I'm having fun for the most part, so it's not like I'm only doing this to try and make a few bucks. But it'd be nice to get a little supplemental income for all the effort I'm putting in if I were to have way more subscribers someday. But oh, I said the word fuck in one or two videos. Okay, most of them. And that very well might disqualify you or something in the near future for getting money. I don't know. Oh, sweet, though. I got a gold medal in the last of the three shields for this challenge. Well, that wasn't so bad. Oh yeah, the cutscene, again, that I can't skip. I told you earlier, Harry, you should have turned around much sooner to retrieve the egg like this. You had already led the dragon far away, so there wasn't any reason you couldn't come back sooner. And one more thing just for the sake of fleshing out this unusually short video just a bit. The way their mouths look, particularly Ron and Hermione in this still image, is really bizarre sometimes, and it reminded me of another picture I saw. It's a picture that's already upside down, and at first glance it seems normal until you flip it vertically. And then it's all like, holy shit. Especially Ron's face in this shot looks weird.